I'm not going to be talking about emotional intelligence from a professional point of view. This is just a girl talking to another girl about emotional intelligence as a woman. I'm going to talk about my experience with dealing with my emotions, what has helped me so far and what I feel like can help you moving forward. There are a lot of these videos online, but I feel like hearing from a girl's girl, hearing from a fellow woman will probably give you better insight or you can relate more if that makes sense. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hey girl, my name is Lucy. I always say to stay subscribed because we have a good time on this channel. Today's video, we're going to talk about emotions, mastering your emotions, emotional intelligence as a woman. Now, without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. I have made a video on this particular topic. I gave you guys 10 ways you could become emotionally intelligent as a woman, if that makes sense. I spoke about emotional intelligence a lot, and that was literally my first time speaking about emotions. And it took me a while to actually get to that point because when I make these videos when I talk about these topics I like to be true with myself and when I'm talking about a topic that I feel like I have not fully conquered or I really don't know so 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 much about but I felt it in my heart to speak about that topic I also let you guys know I let you guys know that I'm learning stuff I let you guys know that I'm growing with you guys as I learn a thing or two or I get one new trick that works for me I come on this channel and I let you know what I've done different, what has worked for me, what has changed with me, what I've been able to implement in my life that has yielded a different result, a better result from the things that I usually do. Now, when it comes to emotions, it's a huge part in everyone's life that we're always looking for ways to manage our emotions, to master our emotions, because whether you like it or not, or whether you know this or not, your emotions, they're literally the driver to your life. Your emotions can literally make or break you as a human being. People usually have this question to me, like, how can I manage my emotions? How can I shut up? How can I, you know, be this mysterious woman? But when it comes to emotions, I feel like you learn every day. Like you keep learning. Yes, you become better every day or every time that you learn something new about your emotions and yourself, you become stronger. You still have days, times, situations where you know better, but you do completely opposite from what you know. Or you repeat the same mistakes that you've made before. Like that's completely fine. That's you being human, if that makes sense. In the emotional intelligence video I made, which I'm going to have linked below. I touched on a really, really, really good point that I feel like you need to watch to, you know, kind of start mastering your emotions journey. So I would have that video linked below. I highly, highly recommend that you watch that video. I feel like that's the starter. It's like something to kickstart your journey. It's a little bit more on surface level in my opinion, because at that time, which was like two years ago, I was learning emotions. I was going through a lot at that period. And honestly, I had gotten to a point where I felt okay and happy with how I handled my emotions at that time for that time. But now I'm on a whole different level. Like I can tell you 100%, like I'm not who I was last year. I'm not who I was a few months ago. I am definitely not who I was two years ago when I made that video. So a lot has changed when it comes to, you know, emotional intelligence as a woman. I've gotten to a deeper level of understanding when it comes to emotions and how to deal with emotions and how to respond to emotions and situations, how to use your emotions effectively every single time and come out winning every single time. I've gotten to this level where I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's talk about the deeper stuff when it comes to emotional intelligence. Like what are the things that you can do to master your emotions, to actually even know what you're feeling or to differentiate between what you're feeling and who you truly are when it comes to your emotions, right? There are a couple of things I want to talk about in this video that I feel like would help you further understand stand emotional intelligence these are things that i feel like if you can get the hang of if you can pretty much understand what i'm saying and implement these in your day-to-day -day life especially when you're confronted with situations that trigger different emotions in you you will be a pro and i can tell you that from experience i'm not speaking from an educational professional background but from a life experience background which i feel like is more relatable when i've watched videos on things like this in as much as i like to hear from a professional side of things like a psychologist or a therapist or someone that pretty much is licensed in this area i want a relatable angle not from someone who has studied this this is pretty much their career i want to hear from my fellow girl you know and that's where this video comes in now the first thing i want to talk about that i feel like would help you greatly in understanding emotions your emotions allowing your emotions to stay 
When I say allowing your emotions to stay, what I truly mean is feel your emotions. Let it do what it wants to do. Like let it take its natural cause in your life. Because most of the time when we speak about emotional intelligence and emotions, a lot of people just want to get rid of it. A lot of people want to walk around it. A lot of people just want to avoid it. That's the reason why you come to videos like this. You're expecting me to tell you, you know, just ignore it. Just pretend it's not there or push it away or do this to avoid it or do this to stop yourself from feeling this or do this to push it away. That's usually the opposite of dealing with your emotions. If you truly want to deal with your emotions, you want to master your emotions, you want to hold it by the balls, you should always allow your emotions to stay. Feeling emotions are natural and you should be okay with feeling emotions. To be honest, you should be thankful that you're feeling emotions because if you're not feeling emotions, then there's something really, really wrong with you. The problems are not the emotions you feel. The problems are typically you how you perceive those emotions what you think of those emotions how you allow those emotions to rule your life if you allow it to rule your life so the problem is not usually the emotion it's like what are you doing with this is allow it to take its natural cause in your life for that very moment just leave those emotions alone they are there to stay and they are there to actually protect you they are there to awaken you they are there for you to be human and you need to let it do the natural thing that it's meant to do that it has come to do you should never stop yourself from feeling emotions I feel like that's you even creating a bigger problem for yourself when you try to stop the feeling because it's a natural thing that happens to every human being once you look for a way to seize it at that time it will definitely just go low it's just like the feeling of fear it's an emotional feeling right for that very moment the moment you suppress it the moment you push it away the moment you ignore it the moment you stop yourself from feeling it it actually does stop at that moment it goes lower for the moment and i've said this a million times it goes low for that moment but it resurfaces later on and that's the reason why you need to understand what you're feeling at every point at which you feel it because when you feel it when you understand it then you're able to control it but the major thing Thing is to allow yourself to feel it because if you keep suppressing it it'll keep piling up for you it's just like when they say you're procrastinating and you keep piling up work upon work upon work you keep stacking it up for yourself it doesn't change the fact that you have work you're just setting it aside for later and the moment you don't have enough storage space it overflows it becomes overwhelming and it's literally the same thing with emotions when you stack it up it is waiting for you. It's not going anywhere. And I feel like a lot of people find it hard to believe or find it hard to understand how emotions work. When people have outbursts, when people are emotionally wilding, right? They wild off the tiniest thing. And you keep asking yourself, is this the thing that is so little that is getting them up to this point? That is making them have this outburst or that is making them act this way or react this way? No, it is piled up anger. It is piled up heat. It is piled up feelings that made them get to that point point where they could no longer store it anymore and they just broke out and breaking out could be from the tiniest thing that would just set it off and that's the end of it do not be scared of emotions i feel like we are so scared of emotions and i understand why we could be scared of emotions because they literally make or break you as a human being your emotions can make you lose so many good things in your life just because you cannot hold it you can't have the hang of it you can't control it you don't know what to do with it you don't understand it it will control you and i understand why you should fear it or why you would fear it there is nothing to be scared of i feel like this point that i've gotten to that i feel content with my emotions no matter how they are are, no matter how they come negative positive if i feel anger i feel anger if i feel sad i feel sad right i'm not going to be scared of that emotion do i understand what i'm feeling do i know how to control it do i know the trigger do i know where it's coming from do i know what to do to you know soothe myself and move on from this doesn't mean i'm pushing aside no i'm gonna deal with it if i feel anger if i feel sad yeah I will deal with it. Love the emotions that you feel. The second biggest thing that is going to help you understand your emotions is de-identifying yourself from your emotions. And what does this mean? I learned this pretty late when it comes to understanding my emotions or when I was doing the work to, you know, be more emotionally intelligent as a woman. I always tell myself years ago, like, oh my God, I am so angry. Oh my God, I'm so sad. Oh my God, I am depressed. No, you're not. You are not your emotions. You need to learn to de-identify yourself from your emotions you feel it but that's not who you are there's a difference the moment you understand that then things become even more clearer for you on this journey you are not who your emotions 
say you are. You are not that emotion you feel. You just feel it. It's right there, but we just kind of skim through it because it's heavy. And when you feel negative emotions, you can't really help yourself. Something triggered that emotion. Emotions are stored up in, in us as human beings, different types, different kinds. There's an event, there's a situation that triggered that emotion for that moment, but it does not define who you are. So therefore it cannot control what you do, most especially what you do with that emotion at that very moment. You need to de-identify yourself from emotions. When you start to understand emotion from this perspective that it is not who you are, but is what you feel and is triggered by something and it happens temporarily, then you have the hang of it. You're able to control it. And the idea is to control your emotions and not dismiss them. And then this leads to my next point, which is my third most important thing emotions are temporary and when i say emotions are temporary i don't mean you can't feel them for a long period of time because quite frankly you can feel those your emotions for years you can feel hurt and pain for a long period of time for months for years for as long as whatever it is that trigger those emotions you know are heavy you can feel grief for so long that does not mean that it's not temporary emotions have an expiry date that's something that you need to hold on to dearly sometimes you don't see the and in fact, you don't even think about the end of that feeling. All you do is dwell in it, which to be honest with you, dwelling in your emotion is not bad. It's dwelling in it for too long that is bad. It's fine. We acknowledge what we feel. We're emotionally strong enough to acknowledge what we feel at that time. It's healthy to indulge. When you understand that emotions are temporary, it goes away quicker. You heal quicker. You dissect it quicker you control it quicker you hold it down quicker sometimes it could feel like it's taking so long for you to understand or to let go or to feel better in reality you are the reason why you're not getting over that emotion quicker you're dwelling in it more than it should actually stay so you are the reason you're the cause it is you you have the power you have the key all you need to do is increase the dial reduce the dial we forget that we actually do have the power when those emotions start to come and you start to feel the sadness or you start to feel the hurt you forget about the power that you have as a human being this is your body and the most healthy way to deal with your emotions is to acknowledge that it's there you can indulge if you want to you obviously know that it's only for a short period of time then when the time comes that it's time for you to turn it off you turn it off how you know that emotions are so temporary is because you're able to channel it you're able to hold it down you're able to choose what direction it goes you're able to choose what you do with it you can turn a negative feeling into something positive the fourth thing i want to talk about which i feel like is the most important thing in this video if you've not opened your ears wide enough for the first second and third point i want you to open your ears even wider for this point i want to talk about vulnerability vulnerability when it comes to emotional intelligence this could actually be a a whole topic on its own which i feel like i would get into at some point this year or in a few weeks whenever you hear vulnerability you always hear weakness you hear someone who doesn't have willpower someone who doesn't have strength vulnerability is usually associated with being weak honestly while i have believed this for so many years that this is what it is in reality it's really not. Being vulnerable is a strong act of emotional intelligence. And if you've never heard this before, hear it today. When you can be vulnerable, when you choose to be vulnerable, that's you expressing the highest form, one of the highest form of emotional intelligence. You need to understand the true meaning of vulnerability, how to be vulnerable, how to use vulnerability or being vulnerable to your advantage for you to understand the emotional intelligence behind vulnerability. I have studied this for so long and I've come to a point where I can openly tell you that you being vulnerable can be one of your biggest strengths one of your superpowers. Being vulnerable is another angle of self-awareness that you really are not seeing. You letting yourself see things from a different angle. It's not you being foolish or you not standing strong on your words or your thoughts or your belief. It's you being open-minded. Is you letting yourself be vulnerable in that aspect. That's vulnerability, but that's also a strength. If I'm going to let someone lead me blindly, I am doing it being self-aware. I know exactly that I'm letting someone else lead. It's not because I cannot 
take the lead it's because i choose to let somebody else lead that's me being vulnerable but that doesn't make me weak that makes me strong that makes me self-aware another aspect of vulnerability that people don't see as strength is apologizing apologizing when you're wrong shows a form of emotional intelligence which also is being vulnerable but it is a strength you're self-aware to the point that you know that you've stepped out of your dignity and your morals you acknowledge what you feel at that time which is shame or you could feel guilt at that time that's you being vulnerable but at the same time you're emotionally intelligent emotionally strong enough to acknowledge what you feel admit what you feel and apologize and not just apologize because once you apologize you give the other person the power to suggest a resolve and the resolve might not be favorable it might be something that you know you're not okay with at that point you're not at the position to detect how the situation goes because you are the offender and you have admitted that you are the offender when we talk about vulnerability there are different angles that you don't see or you don't acknowledge when it comes to vulnerability so you fear it so much even though you don't know know the deep aspect of being vulnerable me opening up to you me crying to you me letting my emotions out letting you see things it's not me being weak it's me having the strength the emotional intelligence to let you display who you truly are based off of what you've seen and what you might think or regard as weakness because i know you regard it as weakness but i do not to let people in to show emotions to show weakness if that's what you want to call it right to be open to a certain level takes a certain amount of strength especially emotional strength that a lot of us don't have the last thing i want to leave you with when it comes to this point and i want you to really sit with it and think about it is why do you fear being vulnerable the reason why most of us fear being vulnerable is because we don't want to be perceived or seen as weak if you apply the same theory that when you have something you don't really need to show off or you don't really need to prove a point or when you truly are something you don't need to shout you will just see it if you apply that same theory to have been vulnerable then you would understand that there's no point of you trying to protect yourself from looking weak if you're truly not weak so you're trying so hard to not be vulnerable because you don't want to be perceived as weak right are you truly weak ask yourself truly because i feel like people that are truly truly the strongest people are the most vulnerable people because they are not scared to show their weak side because they know that they are strong they can take on anything that comes with them being vulnerable so they are not scared to be vulnerable those are the real strong people you that is trying so hard to not be vulnerable you're actually the opposite that's food for thought the last thing i want to talk about in this video that i feel like you need to start thinking of you need to start implementing in your life is being comfortable with uncertainty and change to understand your emotions is to understand that you can't control everything one of the major reasons why we spiral why we go into this tunnel or hole of emotional downfalls and incapabilities and all of that is because we are not in control of what happens next in our life that opens up a whole well or whole chapter of feel anxious i feel scared i feel agitated oh my god what's gonna happen like listen i feel like when you get to a point of contentment you get to a point of inner peace and satisfaction you're not necessarily bothered about what will be what might be what is coming you acknowledge the fact that you know you're not sure what's going to come out of a certain situation but whatever it is you are well equipped emotionally physically and mentally to attack it to address it to deal with it i feel like it's a level of emotion intelligence that all of us strive to get to to get to that point you need to be comfortable with the idea of not being in control you need to be comfortable with the idea of not knowing what's next you need to be comfortable with the idea of not having all the answers not understanding not having the knowledge not being the best one not being picked not having that project not having that friendship not being the one we fear uncertainty and change so much that's the reason why we try so hard to control things in our lives which obviously opens a whole bottle of emotions fear anger agitation anxiety depression sadness all of it fear of rejection fear of not being enough there's a lot of emotions that you start to feel when things are not sure or going well in your life but when you're comfortable with how things are going no matter how they're going even when you're not sure of how it's going you're more at peace all those emotions that are usually triggered they're calm they're all of a sudden calm because it is what it is like 
when someone does you wrong when someone or something is happening in your life and you're not really sure where it's coming from be comfortable not being sure i've had several situations in my life where things just go south with people and i can't even explain why and sometimes you have to be comfortable not even reaching for the answer while you could actively go out there and look for the answer sometimes be comfortable not getting the answer because that's also god letting you know to sit on your ass and not do anything let things pan out be okay with not knowing the next step be okay with not knowing the next direction be okay with not knowing where things are going but just know at the back of your mind that whatever happens whatever changes come with that moment or that uncertainty you can handle it and you will handle it that level of confidence puts your emotions at bay it puts your emotions at rest uncertainty and changes are for your good for the most part they are and even if it's a negative situation a negative outcome you can always control the narrative you might not necessarily control the situation but you control how you react to it you control how it shows up in your life and you also control how it affects you now let me know your thoughts in the comment section below follow me on my socials instagram and tiktok i'm going to have them linked thank you guys so much for watching the video and i will see you in my next one bye i need to get really really comfortable because i want to have a heart to heart conversation with you guys and i don't want it to feel like my usual videos like i don't want it to feel like really scripted or like thought out or anything although like most of my videos really aren't but like this one i needed to be really chill because i want to have like a heart to heart conversation with you guys non-alcoholic champagne always for now <laughs> those of you that are listening in your car at your job and you at home i don't care where you at turn this up right now because we're about to go in hey so